If you're someone who has been following cloud and cloud security news all throughout 2021, you went to AWS reInvent, Microsoft events, Google Cloud events, IBM events, you may or may not be confused about what are some of the trends you should be looking out for cloud security in 2022. So my prediction for 2022 is that it's going to be about complexity that comes with scale. That's what everyone would be dealing with. The first one is identity and access management. Identity is supposed to be the key to the kingdom for everything that you have in your corporate organization, as well as your cloud, as as well as your IoT devices, pretty much anything you can think of. However, all these years of building the foundational pieces for a digital environment has also meant that we have our digital identity kind of scattered around the various platforms and environments we have. I can give you a few examples. First one, you if you have a separate identity for your SaaS service that you use in your organization, or if you have a separate identity for your cloud environment or any corporate environment which is different and you're not using single sign-on, you probably will understand where I'm coming from. You have a lot of information around identity that is spread across different parts of your system. That means your permission is different across different applications. And if you leave the organization and if they forget to remove your access from one application and all the remaining four to nine access that you have would still remain there and the permission. So you probably can still access. The second trend we'll talk about is multi-cloud. Yes, multi-cloud is growing and it is going to grow even more. Now, you may be listening to me and going, you know what, Ashish, I am fully in AWS or Azure and Google Cloud. I don't need the other cloud. I don't think I would ever go for any of the other clouds. But let me share something. You may not be aware of it right now, but either through the SaaS applications you're using in your supply chain, or your company might grow and acquire another company where they might be working on, I don't know, Google Cloud or IBM Cloud or Oracle Cloud. And suddenly you have to deal with cloud security in those environments as well, and not just your one cloud service provider. It's going to even be more common as other companies grow and acquire more digital companies so that they can scale in different markets. So it's only bound to happen. It's only a matter of time. This is also worthwhile calling out if you're expanding different different geographies as well. Like for example, if you are trying to expand into the Middle Eastern region and you want customers over there, let's just say Oracle Cloud and IBM Cloud have a lot of countries that they're covered, but AWS as well as Azure, as well as Google Cloud don't really have a much presence in Middle East. So you probably will most likely end up working with Oracle Cloud if you're in the Middle East region. The third trend that I want to talk about is SaaS or software as a service. Now, if you are someone who has been using the digital service for a while, like Gmail, Facebook, you already know what a SaaS provider is because you have been using it for a while. Now, as a company, you will be thinking, I don't think I have any SaaS providers that I'm using. Let me give you a few common examples that you might have not heard of or may have heard of in passing, but don't realize they are SaaS companies. For example, you have Salesforce, which is heavily used by a sales department in a lot of organizations. You have a Facebook and social media sites, which are also SaaS applications. You have you have Google Analytics, which is also used by a marketing department. Let's get into the next trend, which is data security and privacy. Now, data is probably the most important thing that we care about as a company, as every company out there, because without that, we basically have nothing, no business, no one wants to talk to us. So data security would continue to be front and center, but there would be some changes in data security. First of all, data security would become a shared responsibility. At the moment, when people talk about data security, they usually think about data residency, data location, and probably more around the fact that is my data sensitive or not? And hopefully you don't have to have any data breaches, which would land you in a situation where you're trying to wonder, hey, the data that we lost, is that sensitive, confidential, or is that public data? So if it's public data, I don't have to worry about it. But if it's confidential, oh. The next trend we're looking out for is application inventory or application asset management. And you can thank Log4j for this. Log4j was a vulnerability that came out last month. And thanks to all the fuss as well as the commotion, we don't want to be in a state again where if a new vulnerability is announced, we have no idea if we're using that application or library or some kind of software or not. So what you would find a trend towards having something called SBOM, which is called Software Bill of Material, which was released by NSA a couple of months ago and is being mandated across the US government agencies. It is something that you would find a lot more organizations would start adopting and a bill of material where it, it's literally like the label that you have behind every food item that you buy. If you have a software that does, I don't know, may helps you get dressed the best way, it would list out whether you should be wearing a shirt, a trouser, basically list out everything that's required 
for that software to function. Now, the next trend I want to talk about is cyber drills are disaster recovery. In 2021, there were a lot of outages and a lot of people were left hanging dry when they realized they did not plan for high availability or scale up and scale down. This is always expected to be something that you would know if you're building cloud, but a lot of people were pushed into cloud over the last couple of years thanks to the pandemic. So obviously there were some people left behind who had to go through the transformation really quickly and some of them were affected by it because there was a lot of delayed information and then there was a lot of information which was not shared so you kind of didn't find out unless you already had some kind of monitoring. What this meant for people is all the companies would be working towards doing some kind of cyber drill for what happens if a cloud service provider goes down whether it's a region going down or whether it's an entire service from a cloud service provider going down. Now last but not least I want to talk about cloud security posture manager for people who do not not know cloud security posture manager is something which helps you find what your current security posture of your cloud environment is now whether it's just one cloud provider or multiple cloud providers or maybe even cloud native cloud providers the trend over here you notice is that we are on the next maturity level of CSPM products fourth generation is all about context or the fourth generation of CSPM that I would like to call them as they're all about building context what is the attack path that is available in my environment right now that someone from the internet can exploit right now what is my cve yes they would also be able to scan your images and tell you if there is an existing cve which is not patched in your environment all these were the seven trends that you would see for cloud security in 2022 if you feel i missed any feel free to leave a comment below and i would love to hear from you on what you think are some of the other cloud security trends we should be looking out for but if you find this video helpful feel free to like and subscribe and follow our youtube and linkedin channels which is where we talk about cloud security every week on these social media platforms i will see you in the next video Peace.